So a number of folks kind of touched on the King Devic test earlier, and so I might actually, there's certain parts here that I might kind of breeze through rather quickly since we heard a couple things already, uh, so that I can spend a little bit more time talking about how we are applying it in some of the research studies uh, in youth populations. Okay, um, a couple disclosures. So I am employed by Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic has a financial interest in the King Devic test. Um, I also, I think it's been more than a couple of years ago, did receive some uh, travel reimbursement and honoraria. And then uh, I'm not gonna be discussing neuroassessment systems today. Go through a quick outline. Okay, so the King Devic test, I think everyone's got an introduction of that. So I'm gonna kind of breeze through this very quickly, but it has been around for quite some time. Uh, I think since the 1970s, and it, it is a test of saccadic eye function, rapid number naming, does uh, get at measures of attention, um, certainly this eye function as well as uh, language as well. And let me see here. So obviously there's certain things that are uh, automatically um, activated in the brain when you're just looking at something and then when you add in the language of actually having to say the numbers out loud along with the scanning. The point here of this really just being that these are very widely distributed networks within the brain that we're getting to, which is why when you have something that combines vision along with language and attention, then it's probably gonna be pretty sensitive to a concussion. Um, as Dr. Dodik already uh, alluded to earlier as well, these are widely distributed networks within the brain. Uh, vision is uh, said to account for, contribute to over 55% of the pathways in the brain. Um, eye movements relate very closely to the functional integrity of the brain. And we've seen that this King Devic test that is a very rapid, very easy test, takes less than two minutes, uh, seems to be ve a very sensitive measure of neurologic function in general because it does end up being impaired in, a, in episodes of hypoxia, even mild hypoxia, we're looking at it in multiple sclerosis, Paul, uh, Parkinson's disease, and other conditions. But it does seem to be a fairly sensitive test to just neurologic function in general, again, likely because of these widely distributed networks that are picked up on. So why do we need sideline tests? Uh, hopefully uh, this is obvious to most folks, but following concussion, athletes are three times more likely to have another concussion, most of that risk is early. Multiple concussions have been associated with prolonged recovery and multiple symptoms. And really there's now been some research that has clearly come out showing that if folks are removed right away, if they have a concussive injury and if they're removed from play right away, they're actually to, likely to return to play faster than if those concussions aren't either detected or the player's not playing.